Welcome everyone, good evening. I'm David from Moffitt Library and here joining us today for a watercolor lesson is Pat Fox, who is a watercolor artist and will offer us some tips and uh, useful techniques for making some beautiful paintings. Thank you so much for joining us today, Pat. Thank you for inviting me. Very happy to be here. Um, I see that we have uh, people in different places and I'm right here. I'm going to be moving my camera so that you'll be able to see what I'm doing down below. So to start out with, I'd like you to take the extra piece of paper that you have. And I just want to make sure everybody has a nice container of water. Everyone has some water. Good. And everyone has their paints. Their paints are handy. Okay. And their brush and the marker. Okay. So what I would like to do to start with, and I'll be talking to you as we go along, tell you about myself and what, what I've done with watercolors. But while we're doing that, oh, you should also have a piece of paper towel in case you have too much water on your page. Okay. All right, so on your extra piece of paper, not the one that has the drawing, what I'd like you to do is, okay, on each corner, on one corner, put a triangle, a little triangle. On another corner, put a little circle with your marker. Um, on a third one, you can put a um, square. And on the last one, let's put a star. So we have different shapes on each corner. Now with your marker, and we, what we're gonna do is create a, a little visual that we can paint into. So starting on the circle, let's go all the way across to the star. So just draw all the way across. It doesn't have to be a straight line. It can be wiggly. It can be any way you want to make it. You can see it all right, right? And from the star, let's go over to the square and then across to the triangle. And then Let's put a dot in the middle of each side so we can go to one of those dots. And you can take it from there. You can go to any dot you want to go to. So from the triangle, you can go to this dot. You can go to that dot. You can go to that dot. You can go back to this dot. You can go to that dot. You can go back to that dot. And whatever you have is what we're going to use as our design for getting to know the watercolors. Now, you have a different set of watercolors than I have. So I'm sure you have a red. So why don't we all do this? Take a drop of water and put it on the red and then put a drop of water on each color. Drop of water on each color and that, what that does is soften it up so that when we want to use that color, it's ready to go. Now, I would love to see what color you get from red. So let's take red and fill in one of these spaces. Now you'll see the red is not really as red. I don't know about your red, but my red comes out kind of pinkish. So the thing about watercolors is that they, they sort of glide onto the paper. If you have enough water on, you should be able to cover, you should have enough water and enough paint to slide along on the surface. If it's dragging and you're pulling it along, that means you don't have enough water. Okay, so, but if you have a pool of water in the middle, that means you have too much water. So, 
how did we do with that? Let me just, do you mind holding up what you did so I can just see what you've got? I just want to see the color. Okay, that's good. Good. Okay. Very nice. Okay, so you filled in one of those spaces. Now we're going to go back and fill in another space with another color. I want to warn you though that if you put a color right next to this one, it's going to blend together. So for this, for, for our purpose today, we want to keep the color separate. So when this dry, we'll let this one dry and we'll go to a different place. So take a different color and go to one of the squares that, or one of the spaces that doesn't connect with, you know, doesn't have side by side with that one. So we're going to just gently fill in with the water and paint and fill in one of those spaces. You may not have triangles. I have, I seem to have triangles and um, some mostly triangles. Okay. So now let's do another color. Um, I, you can pick any color you want because you're, you're, but I will tell you this white is not workable for watercolors. And I believe in your set, you have a white. In watercolors, the paper is the white. So we don't usually paint white. We let the paper be the white part. Um, you also have pink. I saw, I saw a picture of your paint set and I'm not sure how that will come out, but you're welcome to try it. Okay, I'm gonna go for another color now. I'm gonna go for green. I think you have a green. And I'm gonna go over here. Okay, how's everyone doing? Okay. All right. Now I'll try blue. And now I can go over here because the red has dried and it's not going to flow into the blue. If it was wet, it would come right into this triangle right here. So why don't you continue with that and I'm going to start telling you this story while you're doing that. But first, let me ask if you have any questions. No? Okay. Have you worked with watercolors before, most of you? Yeah, yeah. You can. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. So continue along and I'm going to tell you uh, that this is a story from the native people of the state of Washington. And it's called the Fox and the Moon. And it's kind of an interesting uh, fable because there's always a lesson that they try to give you. In this lesson, in this one, one of the two animals gets tricked. See if you can figure out who gets tricked. Uh, so it starts out one night, one night when the round full moon shone down upon the road, a great wolf came trotting around the corner. I positively must get a good meal before I go back to my den, he said to himself. It's nearly a week since I've tasted anything but scraps. I think I spotted a little fox down the road and if only I could dine on him, that would be wonderful. Let's see if I can find him. Now, while these thoughts were running through the mind of the wolf, the fox was thinking in a similar way. He had seen some chickens along his road and he said, boy, I'd really love to have some chicken tonight. I'm really, really hungry. So they came, they walked along and 
all of a sudden they came to a crossroads and there they were, the two of them together. So I'm going to leave it at that right now and see how we did with this part of our story. How, how'd you do with yours? Does anyone want to hold theirs up? Nice. Oh, I see you have. Okay. Okay. How are you doing? Good. Okay. All right. Let's continue. So there they were facing each other at the sight of the fox. The wolf was very happy. He thought he would surely have a good dinner that night. But the fox also was very cautious. She said, hello, neighbor. What a strange place to meet you in. I hope you are quite well. Well, as regards my health, I am quite well. And what about you? You look kind of thin. And the wolf, the fox said, well, yes, I have been, I've been ill and I haven't eaten in a while and there isn't much on my bones. You wouldn't want to eat me anyway, would you? Oh, said the wolf, you're always joking, aren't you? Well, we shall soon see, said the wolf. And as he was preparing to jump, the fox said, wait one minute, let me tell you something. I have something special to tell you. She said, I am going to ask you for one last favor before you eat me up. Well, said the wolf, it better be good. And so here's what the fox proposed to the wolf. Down in the village, there's a rich man who makes cheese during the summer. And he makes enough cheese for the whole year. And he keeps all these big round cheeses in an old well. And the well is dry right now. So it's easy to get down there and get the cheese. So, and by the well, there are two buckets that hang by the well. And it's easy to get right down to the bottom. I lower myself to the bottom in the bucket and I have plenty of cheese to feed myself and my children. So come along and I'll show you where this well is. Okay, said the wolf, but it better be good. Um, finally, they got to the well and they, um, wait a minute. <laughs> um, okay, be careful, she said, because you have to go down in the well in the bucket, but I will go first, she said. So she got into the bucket and she lowered herself down into the well. Now, remember there were two buckets at the top and they were attached to each other. So she went down and the other bucket came up. And she, when she got down to the bottom of the well, she said, oh my, you should see all the cheese down here. You wouldn't believe it, it's fabulous. And the wolf said, well, bring it up. Come on, hurry up. And she said, I can't bring it up. It's way, way too heavy. So she said, why don't you get into the other bucket and come on down here? and get some cheese for yourself. Now she knew that when he came down in the bucket, she would go up. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. He got in the bucket and he went down to the bottom and she got to the top of the well and she just ran away and left him there. And she said to herself as he, she was leaving, she said, maybe I treated him rather badly but you know, if it gets cloudy and if there should be some heavy rain, the other bucket will fill and sink to the bottom and his will go up and he can run away too. So there was no cheese at the bottom. What do you think they saw when they looked in the bottom? Remember, I said there was a full moon. What did they see when they looked in the bottom of the well? 
they saw the reflection of the moon and that's how she tricked the, the wolf by telling him it was cheese because it was round and yellow. Okay, that's the story of the fox and the moon. So that's, the, that's why we're gonna paint this. This is the picture of the fox and the moon. Okay, so, and this is the well. This will be the well. So does everyone feel comfortable about working with the watercolors? Does anyone have any questions yet? Can you show me what you've been doing? Nice, very nice. Cool, very cool. Good, okay. Well, we, we, we can continue with that a little longer and then we'll go on to doing this part. In the meantime, I'll tell you a couple of things about watercolors. Watercolors are different from other paints because the, the white of the paper shines through the color of the watercolor paint. Most paints cover up the page, but these le let light travel through them, which makes them have a nice bright feeling about them. They, they have a, um, a luminescence, they, they light up. The white from the page lights them up. And some interesting things that you can do with watercolors, I'm gonna demonstrate a few things that you can try. Uh, one is to wet the square first, take some, just take plain water and wet it or whatever space you have. And then you can add a color into that. Like when you put a color on there, look what happens. It spreads out. So it'll spread out and you can make it spread in different directions. That looks like a flower almost. And so that's a fun thing to do. And then you can fill it, fill it in. Um, another fun thing to do is to put two different colors together. For example, if I put yellow on this end, and if I put blue on this end, when they come together, they're gonna to form green because yellow and blue makes green, something we all learned in, in first grade, I guess. So that makes a nice, if you're doing a landscape, you can make trees that way and uh, fields. Um, another fun thing you can do is um, use the watercolor very dry and just sort of go along the surface of the paper and just get a different textures because the paper has texture and it picks up if, the, if, if you don't use a lot of water, you can get a nice texture from the paper. Another thing you can do is you can, let's see, you can um, make a circle and put another color in the middle and see what happens. And then you can just use plain water and bring it out from the edge right to, the, to wherever you want it to go. You just use the paint that's already on the paper and just use water with it. You could also make um, a rainbow by using different colors yellow, 
orange. I'm sorry, red, orange, yellow, green, blue. I don't like to use black because as soon as you use black, you've got to, ch oh, there goes the black. I don't like black because it gets the water dirty right away. But you can always change your water. So, how are we doing here? Let's see what we got. Any questions? Oh, we got Sharon too. Hi, Sharon. Hi, how are you? We're good. We came a little late to the party, sorry. That's all right. Um, what you can do to catch up is, um, see, you can just make some shapes on the extra paper. Okay, that's what we're doing. Yeah, and we're just filling them in with uh, water. We're just experimenting in each little space with different ways of applying the watercolors. Okay. Very good, that's what we're working on. Thank you. Great, okay, very We heard good. your story too, it was cute. Oh, oh, good, okay, good. Okay, so I think you should have a good time doing this. The thing about painting is that things happen that you don't expect. And so you gotta just kind of go with it. There's no mistakes in art, that's the way I look at it. Things just like, I didn't expect to be using black, but there it was. So I'm, conf I'm concerned, let me see, this should be purple. See, it's supposed to be purple, but it's black. That's strange. And this is a green that I didn't know was there. Okay, that's strange. Let's see. How are you going to say something? Oh, um, Pat, I actually have a question. Okay. Um, how do you have any advice for preventing the colors from running and mixing together so much? Does that mean we're using too much water um, in the paint? Okay. Um, Sometimes you want the colors to run together and sometimes you don't. Uh, for example, uh, if I, when I let this dry, I can paint right up to the edge of it and it won't run together. Unless of course I use a, a very large amount of water or tip it over and let it run over it. But I can paint right up to the edge of that color and it's not gonna run in there. However, if this is wet and I paint right next to here, it will run together. I can actually even paint right on top of this without it running around because the yellow is dry. If the, if the yellow was wet, it would just spread right out. Um, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, good. Anyone else have a question? I do. It's Sharon. Um, wh when I'm using the paint, it seems like our paints are very, very new, but it seems as though I'm having a hard time picking it up. And it looks to me like your brush is very loaded with paint. What am I doing wrong? You're not doing anything wrong. You have a different set of watercolors from the ones I have. And okay. un unfortunately, the ones you have are not... Um, are hard to work with. Okay, that's fine as long as I understand why. <laughs> but also put some water on each color, put just a drop of water on each color like this. For just example, to, you know. Are you putting the, okay, got you. Just put a drop on each color that softens up the colors so that when you go to get them, they're not so hard. Okay. See if that helps. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, has anyone tried an experiment 
with their colors. Nice. Is that Louisa? Yeah, so this panel here, you know, I, I kind of let all these different colors run in together. Beautiful. And it has a re really nice marbled effect, you know? Mm -hmm. Very nice, yes, yeah. that is nice. That's very nice. It's okay. fun to see that, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you want that to happen, like if you're doing clouds or something like that, you want those little edges. And sometimes you don't want it to happen. Um, a, way, a way to make it happen is if, you, if you're using, say I put a, a drop of water on, if I put a drop of water on here, it will eventually form what they call a blossom because it will start to pick up paint from underneath it. See, it's starting to happen right there. It'll make its own little thing, but it takes a little while. Um, this is kind of cute, this thing that I, I don't know how that happened, but it was fun. Now, if I put yellow over here, and if I put purple on it, what color do you think I'll get? Any guesses? I'll surprise you. It actually usually comes out kind of brown, but this purple is so strong. See, it is turning brown. Sort of a purplish brownish. Okay, I think you might be able to see what I was talking about over here, how it's that drop of water has created its own little space there. And of course you can always decorate with dots and lines. You can draw lines going out in all directions. Or you can make, I, I could make this into a flower by going, let's see, out here like this. This is just dabbing on the, dabbing with the brush. Or I could, let's see, I could go inside here with this. I can make some wiggly lines. I can make dots just by touching the paper with the paint. You all know, I'm sure that you have to clean your brush in the water before you go from one color to the other. I hope you know that. I think you do. I think most of us learn that pretty early on. The, wa the watercolor should just sort of flow onto the paper. It should just be um, easy to, 
to move your brush around. Pat, if we wanted to draw something specific, do you recommend always um, drawing like an outline in marker before putting the, the paint down or would it ever be appropriate to just um, uh, draw by freehand? Well, I usually draw lightly in pencil. And, and actually you can erase afterwards, you can erase the pencil. It's a little hard, but um, this, is, this is just drawn with pencil and everyone has a pencil sketch and we're gonna start on that in about a minute. Okay, you guys ready? Ready for this? Okay. You still working on this? How does, how does yours look? Oh, nice. Very nice. Okay. I'm seeing that uh, I don't think you have watercolor paper for this, but that that's all right. It's coming out fine. It's coming out fine. So this is mine. Anyone else care to show theirs? You don't have to. Okay. All right. So let's put that aside. And let's take a look at our project for today, which is the fox, the moon, and the well. Okay. So I would like to start by painting the moon. Now you see how the tail of the fox goes over the moon. So we don't want to color that part. We want that to stay white. So we have to paint around that. So we're gonna paint the moon yellow, okay? So everybody dip in, get, get your yellow on the brush and just paint in that yellow moon. Okay. All right. Are we ready to go from here? Now, we're going to do something important right now. We're going to mix two colors together. I hope that your watercolor set will, will work for this. I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some orange and put it out here. I just take a little orange and press it down out over here. See if you can do that. You can just pick, take a little water and lift up a little bit of the orange. The reason I'm doing that is because the red color is kind of pink and I want it to be a little brighter red. So I'm going to clean my brush and now I'm going to take some red and mix it in with the orange. Let's see if I can get a color that's closer to red. And it's still pretty pink. Okay, now I'm going to try to add some yellow to it. See how that works. That's, that's not too bad. So see if you can get a color that looks kind of like a bright red by mixing some yellow, some orange, and some red. Okay, 
I hope you had good luck with that. Now, we, one thing we want to do is we want to leave that part of the tail white. So we can start by painting the tail. We can go from down here and just try to go carefully up. If you go out of the lines, it's not a big deal because later on when we come back with the marker, we can, we can draw the lines so that it's, it looks sharper. You'll see. But I, I realize it's gonna be hard for you with the brush that you have to get into those little sharp corners, but just do the best you can. And remember, we don't want to go past here with the, with the paint. We want to leave that end white. So there's the tail. Okay, everybody ready to go to the next? Take your time, don't rush. Okay. Now we're going to do the rest of the fox. And we're not going to paint this part. That part is white on his face right there. But everything else here is going to be with that red and yellow mixture. So you can carefully paint up. Don't worry about these lines. We're going to do those later with the markers. So we're going to paint this whole area except for the part on his face. We're going to paint that all this reddish orangey color that we made. How are we doing? This is what I got so far. Yay, good, good. If you hold it up and it's wet, it might dribble. So you don't have to hold it up right now. Okay, good.
we want to make sure the next thing we're going to do is paint this the well the circle all the way around so you can paint it any color you want you know whatever you want to do we're just going to paint this circle all the way around So I started doing watercolors when I was uh, a child. My father was an artist and I love watercolors because they're easy to clean up. You could, and you could take them with you when you go someplace and do a little painting. And uh, they're, they're easy to learn how to use, although some people say it's very hard to work with watercolors because you can't fix things, but you can. If you, there are a lot of tricks that, that you learn along the way about how to fix things when you make a mistake. But um, I, I think watercolors are beautiful because they're simple and they light up, they have a nice, right feeling about them. And you can do a lot of things with them. So when I go traveling somewhere, I very often take watercolors with me and do a little, a little drawing or a little sketch. Um, and it, it's nice when I look back years later and I see what I did, it's, um, enjoyable brings back brings back the memories of those places i could show you one that i did recently i visited my daughter in santa fe new mexico and i did a couple of watercolors while i was there which i could show you and Something that I might not have mentioned, but the more water you have, the lighter the color. So if you want a dark color, you try to use more paint. Um, it's kind of different from working with uh, other paints in that way. Here's a picture I did when I was in Santa Fe. Can you see it? I think you can. And this is another one. And this is a picture of my daughter's dog.
How are we doing? Finished? Let's see what you got. Come closer to the screen. Oh, that's great. Very nice. Good job. Yeah, really nice. Wonderful. Excellent. Wow. Really good. How about um, Rhea, uh, Kaylee and Rhea? Oh, nice. Nice. Beautiful. Wow, you guys really. How about Sharon? How's Sharon doing? She's muted. Okay. We're doing okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so now um, it's up to you if you want to paint around this. We got to wait till this circle dries, otherwise it'll blend together. But in the meantime, with your marker, you can put his nose in and his eye. And you can draw this line around here. And actually you can draw the whole outline. Oh, this, this right here is his other, is his foot. So you can draw this line. Hope you're not getting seasick watching me go up and down. <laughs> Great. Oh, that's very nice. Really good. I'll hold mine up. Usually um, the projects that I do are more complex and take longer, but this is perfect for this, especially because the story was Tales and Tales goes with the summer reading program. So I hope you're gonna be able to remember to tell the story when you show this to your friends. <laughs> Great. 
Great. Oh, wow. That's good. Is that Kate or Anna? I'm Kate and she's Anna. Oh, great. Well, Kate, you did a beautiful job. Really nice. How about Rhea and Kaylee? Oh, wonderful. Excellent. I like the way you did your well with all different colors. That's really nice. And we have Sharon. I don't see Sharon, but I see Lucia, Luisa. My mom showed hers. Oh, well, what about you? I was just doing some free painting while listening to you talk so nicely. Oh, <laughs> thank you. That's fine. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed yourself. And does Anna want to show hers? Here's mine. Oh, wow. That is so good. You girls, everybody did great, even though the paints weren't that easy to use and the brushes. I'm really impressed by how great you did. So I hope we'll paint again together, maybe in person. Is that it for uh, today, Pat? I think that's it. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Um, thank you, Pat, for uh, that wonderful story and for sharing some uh, tips for making our watercolors uh, even more beautiful than they were before. <laughs> thank you very much. I enjoyed being here. Thank you. Bye-bye.